What's up, guys? Greetings. Listen, um, I'm going to give you guys a reason of, give me a moment. Now, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Now, hey, God bless you, Rebecca. Now, the reason, I'm going to tell you why I posted that of Celestial. Okay? I'm going to tell you why. All right, make sure you share this. Tag with a few people, then we're going to begin. I'm going to tell you why. All right? All right? Okay. I want to wait till 50 people get on the window to go. Bro, I, I did it for a reason. Now, I'm not, I'm not distracted. I did it for a reason to catch people's attention, right? Because I wanted to expose hypocrisy, all right? And we're going to talk about it right now. There's a reason I did that. Because people, number one, yo, people do not read captions, right? People don't read captions, right? I never condemned her. But there's some people that are upset because of their past. Now, uh, we're going to keep it going. I did it for a reason. I did it for a reason. To expose the hearts of man and to expose the hypocrisy in the church. I want to expose it. Right? I want to expose it. All right? Now, with the post I made about Celestial's past, there's a reason I did it. Okay? Okay? Not to condemn her, okay? Not to condemn her. But I did it to expose how many people are hypocrites that when Celestial talks about Marcus Rogers' past or another man's past, no one says anything. When Celestial accuses people and, put, and prophesies death and condemnation, nobody says anything. When Celestial accuses Marcus of being married four times, and when she says all these things about these other people's past, no one says anything. Right? But when the truth comes out about her past, a bunch of people are not like, oh my gosh, it's her past. Yes, I want you guys to say that. I want you guys to say that. Because some of you are holding people to things of the past. I wanted to, I wanted to do I did it on purpose. To prove to you that some of you are holding things against people. That happened 20 years ago, 30 years ago. And when you're hearing Celestial regurgitate things and say all these things about Marcus, you're in the comments saying, yes, the Lord told me about this about Marcus. Did you see what Marcus did in the past? You see what Marcus did this? Marcus said this 10 years ago. Marcus said this 30 years ago. This person did this. That's the reason I, I, I exposed it. There's a reason I posted it. To expose the hearts of man and the hypocrisy in the church. The hypocrisy and the idolatry is ridiculous. And I don't think it's right for someone to come in a fake name, condemn people, pronounce death, talk about people's past all day, and believe lies on the internet and spew it. I don't believe it. Now, I'm not defaming I'm not defaming uh, Celestial. I'm telling y'all the truth, what's public already. But Celestial defames people. The Celestial defames people. She defames people. She will say things about people with no evidence. She defames Marcus. Now, whether you believe she's speaking from the Lord or not, it's still defamation. And I wanted to expose idolatry. So people are mad, it's her past, it's her past, but in the caption, 
I never condemned her. I never condemned her. I said that it's an error to condemn woman by the same thing that you overcame. Or it's, con it's, it's an error to condemn people by who you once were. That's all. That's all. That's all. Because I'm sick and tired of hearing condemnation about women wearing makeup and women wearing tight dresses. If Listen, if you overcame a particular sin in the past and you were, a particular, you were that particular person in the past, you have to show grace. You have to show hope and comfort, edification to those who are struggling. That's all I'm saying. You could not just condemn people and push forth this fear and just be so fierce and prideful. So it's not good when people talk about celestial, but it's good when celestial talks about other people all day. All day. And y'all be taking heed to it. Let's keep it real. You guys talk about gossip, gossip. People say I gossip, but she be gossiping about everyone, supposedly, and proclaiming death. Not exposing false teaching, but saying things and defaming people. Do you understand me? And I want to teach you guys a valuable lesson here. Because some of you will come to the defense of Celestial... But when it comes to Marcus or anyone else, or even T.D. Jakes, I'm not saying you have to defend T.D. Jakes. You're not going to say anything. I don't agree with T.D. Jakes, right? But with other people, you're not going to say anything. Do you understand me? So I wanted to expose the hearts of people. And, and my thing is this. I think it's crazy to wipe anything you had on the internet with your real name. And then come on a fake name to defame people. Right? I think it's weird to come on the internet with a fake name to defame people with a fake name and wipe your whole past and history off the internet so no one can ever say anything about you. Now, again, I'm not against Celestial. I'm against the chaos and the idolatry and the hypocrisy in the church. It's hypocrisy. It is hypocrisy. Because those same people in the comments saying, this is Celestial's past, are the same people that don't say, oh, that was Marcus's past. Or that was this person's past. It's hypocrisy. It's hypocrisy. And I don't see where I condemn Celestial. I don't see where I gossip. Wouldn't you guys want to know? Wouldn't you guys want to know, like, the person that's speaking into your life, what their real name is? The person you call your prophetess? The person you call your prophetess? The person you call your woman of God? Wouldn't you want to know her real name? Where she comes from? Don't you want to know her track record? Now, the issue in the body of Christ is this. We deem people as men of God, women of God, all this stuff, but we know nothing about them. We don't know their testimony. That's my thing. Now, Kathy said, let it go. It's not your responsibility. Let God handle it. Uh, Kathy, you can let it go. You can stop commenting and telling me to let it go. You don't have to be here. You, you don't have to be here. You are blinded by her deception. You are blinded by her deception. And you're getting mad at me for saying the truth. But you're not getting mad at her for talking about Marcus or talking about another person. I'm just telling you. The hypocrisy in the church is ridiculous. And I know a bunch of her people are going to come out the woodworks and talk and talk. They can talk all day. The truth is, if you're going to talk about people and proclaim death and condemn people, the same heat's going to come back to you. I want you to keep the same energy... And go to Celestial's page and say, let it go. Let T.D. Jakes go. Let, 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 let Marcus go. 
Let Jay-Z and Beyonce go. Let this, go put forth the same energy. Because it's hypocrisy. That's what I'm showing you in the church is the hypocrisy is unbelievable. I posted that not to defame or come against Celestial. I posted it to show you the hypocrisy in the church. Where if it's a prophet speaking and say, thus saith the Lord, Celestial has a nasty past and she was doing all these crazy things and she's coming out to be a false apostle. If I say, thus saith the Lord, then I post the evidence. Everyone will say, oh my God, it's the Lord speaking. Oh my God, it says the Lord speaking. No, I can easily prophesy that. And none of y'all saw this footage or these in these photos and you'd be like, oh my gosh, we're being deceived. And you're being deceived. You understand me? And some of y'all just say, well, let God handle it. God is not handling it. God is calling certain people to handle it. God is giving certain people the zeal and the passion to expose hypocrites. Because my thing is this. If you have a past and you overcame a past, why are you condemning and fear-mongering people of who you used to be? Of who you used to be. Now, I used to be someone that was all into uh, lust, fornication, smoking weed, getting drunk, I'm, I'm, masturbation, pornography. I was all into that, going to the club, getting drunk, living a disgusting lifestyle. I say it boldly and publicly, and I try to help people, and I give people grace. Because I was once that person and the Lord gave me grace. So my thing is this. If you were once a person that struggled with this, wore the makeup, tight dresses, dressing secular music, and you see other people doing it, show grace. That's it. And th that's why I posted it. Because I'm tired of people wiping their paths, acting as if they're perfect and they have the word of the word of the Lord about everyone and everyone sins. I'm tired of it. But when she was living in sin, how would she feel if people were condemning death on her? And talking about, oh, if people had all her stuff and all her videos of her seeking singing sexual music and lustful R&B music and shaking, sh shaking her hips. People would be like, oh, oh, you're this, you're this, you're that, you're this, you're that. How'd it feel? That's why I'm transparent of my testimony. I was a wicked, double-minded hypocrite in my past. But what I don't do is I do not condemn people by what I was delivered from. Do you understand me? But because people always want to see the wrong and all these things. No, no, no. I hope you guys have learned a lesson today. Number, number one, that we have a bunch of hypocrites in the church. People that struggle with idolatry. Okay? A bunch of hypocrites in the church. People that struggle with idolatry as well. And people that act like they ain't never messed up ever. It's messed up. We are in the time of grace, hope, love. Even though the fear of the Lord is here, even though God is a consuming fire, there is still comfort, hope, peace. Because I'm exposing hypocrites. That's what I'm doing. I'm exposing Celestial's hypocrisy, her condemnation, that she's not perfect, she has a past. So if you have a past, treat people how God treated you when you were in wickedness. If you have a past, talk to people like the Lord talked to you and delivered you from your wickedness. But don't sit up here as the rule authority and condemn people to death. Even T.D. Jakes. Yes, he went to P.D.D.'s party, lived in sexual morality. Yes, he did all those things. But Celestial was make, doing secular music and wearing tight dresses. So what I say is that, yes, we want T.D. Jakes to be exposed if he really did it. But there still has to be grace and hope for T.D. Jakes because Celestial got grace and hope. Celestial got grace and hope. 
That's my thing. I want balance. I don't want hip hypocrisy from people who are fallible. Expose false teaching. Expose when people do demonic stuff, but show them grace. You don't have to listen to uh, T.D. Jakes. He can be false all day. I don't agree with T.D. Jakes. But I'm, I'm telling you, this woman has nothing good to say about nobody. It's the same woman that called me a child and a warlock in her comments. Yeah, she called me a child and a warlock in her Instagram comments. So that didn't help her case. But we're going to allow a woman to come out here and say what you want to say mm, about me, calling me a child for my reaction videos, calling me this, calling me that. And she is just pushing forth all of this condemnation that this person is this. But there's, where's her own testimony of, of messing up? Where's her own testimony of getting it wrong? Where's her own testimony of I was once in sin and I did the same things of sexual morality. I had a past of pornography, masturbation. I had a past of missing prophecies. Where is it? It's not there. It's a cult of what? Idolatry and someone being infallible. That's what it is. I didn't bring up her past to condemn her. That's why you saw in the comments, in the caption, I didn't condemn her. But if you want to keep it real with the Holy Ghost, if you want to keep it real with the Lord, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit is saying this right now. He, he's going to be like this. Ooh, you're saying these women are going to be condemned and all these bad things are going to happen to them because they're wearing makeup and they're going to be condemned and this is that. But you used to wear makeup. Watch how you speak. Keep your tone a little lower because you are the one that used to wear makeup. Oh, you're loud and screaming at people for, for listening to secular music. But you used to sing R&B and wear tight dresses all the time. You got to show the same grace. Because the measure that you judge, you will also be judged. That's what the Bible says. The measure that you judge, you will also be judged. So if you do not judge with grace, God will not judge you with grace. If you do not judge humanity with grace, do not expect humanity to judge you with grace. If Celestial is condemning people of their past and their present and their supposed future, why do you think people are not going to say anything back against her? Why is it okay for Celestial <clears throat> to call Marcus a Freemason, say he was married four times, talk about his past, talk about all of his doctrine and all this stuff in his past, all this stuff, and then not show the same type of grace back? And say, mm, let's just pray for Marcus. He's redeemable. But she said that Marcus is a liar. Marcus can't be redeemed. There's no, anything. If Marcus comes and repents and says sorry, he's a liar. The only way he can get out of Freemasonry is, Freemasonry is death. And, and, and that, that's my thing. That's my thing. That's my thing. We can't condemn no one. We can expose false teaching. We can come against wickedness. But we, we got to make sure we're not hypocrites, man. I have a past. I have more of a wicked sexual past than all of you. I have the worst one probably. I lived in wickedness. I will never tell you I'm more holy. But I can tell you to repent because I know what I've been through and what it's done to me. But I will never condemn you. Because the Bible says there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. But to proclaim death and to say that someone's not going to repent. And the Lord says that they're not going to repent. And if they come out to repent, they're a liar and the repentance is fake. What about her repentance? If Marcus's repentance is fake, what about Celestial's? Why do we have to believe that Celestial really repented? What? Why do we have to believe it? We believe it. Why? Because accuracy. That's why. That's why. So we deem the words of Marcus's sorry and repentance higher than Celestial's. Why? Why is the idolatry so high? And that's why I posted that. I posted that stuff not to, not to rule her past. But ju just for me, I can't listen to someone if I don't know nothing about them. I need to know where they came from. I want, I want to hear their testimony. I want to know their real name. I want to know their real name. 
If you preach in the word of God, why do you need to hide your real name? The reason you got to hide your name is because you're pronouncing death on people. It's because you're defaming people. It's because you're coming against all these people with zero evidence. Now, I don't need to change my name. And I drop names all day. I, I have a real job where it's, it's a secular job playing basketball. I don't hide my name. I don't hide my name. I expose false teaching. But it's kind of suspect. To, 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 to fake your name and call yourself celestial when that's not your name and you're coming against all these people and, and calling out their names. So if your name's trending on the internet, it'll never really hit your life like that because it's not your real name. But it's hitting other people's lives because it's their real name being spoken about. But when people say your name, it's not your real name. So now when people call her Esther, Maybe it'll feel a little different if it starts trending on the internet. It'll feel a little different. Maybe it'll hit her job while she's a lawyer. Maybe it'll hit her job. It'll feel a little different. Because it's going it's to come to your work. It's going to affect your family. It's going to affect your mother and your father. It's going to affect your significant other. Because now it's trending. And when people type Esther, it's going to come up. So for the eternity of your existence in life, your name will be under speculation. It will be under allegations. It'll be under this. But it's, it's easy to do all these things on the internet with the fake name. It's easy. It's easy. If God is really our defender and our protector, why do we need to change our, our names? Why did we need to lie and say every morning you wake up, God has a prophecy. The Holy Spirit sitting at the side of your bed and giving you a word. Why when Marcus confronts Celestial, she just wants to lie and, and talk about Marcus's past. Oh, you were married four times, zero evidence. Where'd she get that from? The internet. The internet. No facts. This is why I stay away from things that are not facts. I stay away from saying allegations are true. We may talk about the allegations, but I'm not going to say they're true. I will expose the truth with evidence, false teaching with evidence. And we all live a wicked life. The Bible says, he who is without sin cast the first stone. That's what the Bible says. He who is without sin cast the first stone. <clears throat> Cast for stone. So we can't be casting stones on people. We can talk about a sin and be like, repent. We can expose false teaching, but we do not have the power to cast the stone. We do not have the power to condemn. We can't. No matter how you feel about T.D. Jakes, we can't condemn T.D. Jakes. We can't. We can't cast a stone on T.D. Jakes. Why? You know why we can't cast a stone on T.D. Jakes? Because when we try to cast that stone, our own flesh and sin will pull us back and be like, mm -mm -mm. I don't want, I don't want to, I'm sin too. I don't want to attack sin. I, I'm sin too. So all we can do is call out sin and be like, that's wickedness. But we can't kill someone by what we were delivered from. We can't condemn someone by what God has given us grace. When we were struggling, when I was in my porn and masturbation and, and fornication for years, for 10 plus years into wickedness, I would say eight years of, of straight wickedness, six to eight years of straight wickedness, straight. How on earth can I condemn T.D. Jinks? Even if he raped someone or did something crazy, he can be condemned in, in the court of law. Yeah. Yeah. But I can't condemn him from what God has set me free when it comes to sexual morality. Because in the eyes of God, rape, fornication, masturbation, all falls under sexual immorality. Period. It all falls under the realm of sexual morality. The difference between fornication and rape in the earth realm is that rape is going to take you to hell. No, rape is going to put you into prison. You're going to go to jail for rape. 
But fornication and rape is both going to take you to hell because it's sexual immorality. So before you cast a stone, before you say something about someone and condemn them, look at your past. The Bible says he who is without sin cast the first stone. And the Bible also says if we say we do not have sin, we are liars. That's what the Bible says. If we say we are without sin, we are liars. Because we all have sin. This is why I don't look around for people's sins and what they're doing pri privately. I expose false teaching. Yes, let the hypocrites, let the hypocrites be exposed today. We need to repent from condemnation. I can't condemn Lovi. I cannot condemn no man, even a false prophet. Because even Saul, who was killing Christians, was not condemned by God. Saul still had an opportunity to accept Christ. If I could not, if 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 I could, if if, if Saul could not be condemned killing Christians, how much more even the false prophet? The Bible says that those that don't believe are condemned already. Yes, if no one, whoever doesn't believe is condemned already, but we're not condemning them. We don't condemn them. It is the Lord that condemns. The Bible says there's, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And the Bible also says that those that do not believe in the Son are condemned already. So whoever doesn't believe in the Son is already condemned. We don't condemn no one. We don't have the authority to condemn because we're not perfect. So we will never have the authority to pronounce death. No way. The Bible says that God does not take pleasure in the perishing of the wicked. So even those who are wicked, even those who, who rape people, even those who kill people, even those who do disgusting things, the Bible says that God does not take pleasure in the perishing of the wicked. And the Bible says this as well. That God is not slow concerning his promise as some count slowness. But he is patient so that all would come into repentance. So God has been delaying his return. The Bible's talking about not just because he's delaying and he's slacking his promise. It's because he wants all to come into repentance. So that verse is talking about those who are not already in Christ. That verse is talking about those who are not already in Christ. When the Bible says that the Lord is slow concerning his promise, but not slow as those that count slowness, but he is slow so that all would come into repentance. So that verse specifically is for the unbelieving. It is for the false prophet. It is for the wicked. It is for the backslider. We cannot condemn people that the Lord is waiting for. We cannot condemn T.D. Jakes when the Lord is calling T.D. Jakes into repentance. We cannot condemn the adulterer when the Lord is waiting for the adulterer to sin no more. And God is calling many of you to check your hearts in these last days. Because you're condemning someone and talking about another person's sin when you got the exact same sin. When you were once that type of person. Our former manner of life is so that we can help people with a testimony to edify them so they now have the former manner of life. We do not condemn people by what we once struggled with. The testimony is a byproduct of what Christ helped us to overcome. And the testimony is for us to help win souls and get people out of sin, not to condemn them, and just to talk about everyone's sin in secret. I fear God enough to tell you the truth, but I fear God enough not to condemn you. Not to condemn you. Not to condemn you. Because some of you are battling with unforgiveness. Where a person did you wrong or Marcus got a doctrine wrong. On, he doesn't believe in the Trinity or he got married or whatever. And you're holding that against him with his unforgiveness. 
The Bible says this, that if we do not forgive others of their trespasses, then God will not forgive us of our trespasses. So if you feel like someone is living a life of sin and you're holding it against them, you're always talking about it, always talking about their sin. There is bitterness and unforgiveness there. That whenever this person is talked about, you will, you will bring up the same sin they did 20 years ago. Oh, I don't follow this person anymore because they said this or because or, or they got married this or they did that. In the eyes of God, if you're not forgiving someone or letting something go because of their sin, what if God didn't let something go of what you did? What about that thing you stole as a child? Or something you stole that you still have in your house? Or that you, or that you still have? This at the end of the day, God is the ultimate judge. We can judge fruits. We can ju judge doctrine. But at the end of the day of all of it, we're not going to be the one that's judging people at the end of it all. So may the, may, may the fear of the Lord return back to the church in these last days. We cannot condemn people. I do classes to help people to get out of pornography and masturbation. I do not condemn people. Because as long as you have breath in your lungs, you have hope. You hear me, Marcus? As long as you have breath in your lungs, you have hope, you have purpose, you have a destiny. No matter what Celestial said about that you can't repent until you die because you're a Freemason, it's a doctrine of demons and we cast it down. As long as anyone has breath in their lungs, God is still slow concerning his promise so that all will repent. Now the Bible says that God is slow concerning his promise so that all will come into repentance. Does not, does not, does that not include Marcus? If Marcus is an error, does that not include Marcus? The Lord said all would come into repentance. But Celestial said, if Marcus comes out to repent, it's a lie. The Bible even says, I gave Jezebel a chance to repent, but she didn't want to repent of her sexual morality. So God even gave grace to a witch that was killing the Israelites. To a witch that was killing the prophets. To a witch that was leading Israel into sexual immorality and food sacrifice unto idols. So if God gave Jezebel a chance to repent, how much more would he give T.D. Jakes? How much more will he give Marcus Rogers and Abednego Lufio? Maso que rivio sabrando. How much more? The Lord is long-suffering. Why is he long-suffering? Because he wants us to repent. He wants us to be edified by someone's testimony. He wants us to have a former manner of life where we come out of sin and we help people because we cannot make disciples until we overcome the flesh. This is why the Lord's calling us to repentance so we can step into the place of gospel. Because the gospel cannot be preached unless you repent. Tell me one person in the Bible where God condemned to death without repentance. Without giving them a chance to repent. And some of you say, oh, this person has continued to do wickedness for 10 years. It's, it, their time is up. Who told you their time was up? Who told you they only had 10 years to repent? Who told you they only had 30 years to repent? Because a murderer can murder until the death of his bed and find Christ and go to heaven. Who told you God only gave them 50 years? God is so long-suffering that he will allow a man to be evil his whole life and one day he hears the gospel and gives his life to Christ. That's how much God loves humanity. But it's in people's pride that they die in their hospital bed as sinners. But because the Lord does not want people to perish for eternity, he will allow people to live in wickedness for 60 years and still have a chance at the gospel. Why? Because hell 
will be for eternity. And the Bible says that God does not take pleasure in the perishing of the wicked. So every person that dies out of Christ, the Lord Christ. Every person that dies, the Lord Christ. Every person that dies, the Lord Christ. The Lord does not look at people and say, you're disgusting. He doesn't look at people and say, oh, you were married four times, you're gross. The Lord does not look at people's sin and just, the Bible says that God forgives and forgets. So if the creator of the universe forgives and forgets, how much more should we forgive and forget? If a person comes out and say, I repent, I'm sorry, and you continue to speak about the very thing that God has forgotten about, God will begin to hold things against you. The Bible says, if you do not forgive others of their trespasses, God will not forgive you of yours. If you continually begin to remind yourself of someone's evil and wickedness that has repented, that has come out day and day and repented and exposed Freemasonry. And I said all these things and I've made apology videos of this and that. And you continually to do these things. You are setting yourself up to stand before the Lord on judgment day. And you will stand before the Lord and, and, and you, you will say, Lord, let me in, let me in. Lord, I was living pure before you. I asked for forgiveness and the Lord will tell you, uh, you asked for forgiveness, but why didn't you forgive Marcus? Why didn't you forgive T.D. Jakes? Why didn't you forgive this person? Oh Lord, I, I, I forgave them. Then why do you continually bash their name? Why you continually say negative things? It's one thing to expose wickedness. And it's another thing to now let it go because you have forgiven them. We can expose false teaching to the end of the days. But when we stay yoked to a sin that was not repeated again in the future, that's called unforgiveness. And now you will begin to be prideful and bitter and arrogant of what someone did 10 years ago. That you disqualified them from ever being able to preach the gospel because of one particular sin. God, God may want someone, a pastor who's in adultery, to step down in his church who has committed adultery. But is that, that doesn't mean that the, the pastor's destiny is done with. The Lord is not done with that pastor. That pastor still has an assignment. It will not be with that congregation. But that pastor is still going to preach to people. He can still repent and preach to people. He can still do it. No vessel on earth is exempt from preaching the gospel. Your sins do not disqualify you from preaching the gospel. It's the habitual sin without repentance that disqualifies you. And if you continue in your wickedness in the pulpit, or if you're finding adultery or homosexuality, you step down, yes. But just because you have stepped down does not mean you are disqualified from preaching the good news. You don't have to stand in front of a church to preach the good news. God will not stop you from preaching what will save people from hell. Preaching the word is, is not, it's not just a work where we just preach the word. But it's a mission to save people from hell. That is the mission. So if you feel like you have sinned so much in your life, or if you're still struggling with sin, you can still preach to somebody. I'm struggling with my flesh. I remember when I used to struggle with fornication. I would talk to some of my friends who were struggling with fornication, and I'd be preaching to them, this is wrong. And they'd be like, you're a hypocrite. I know, I know, I know. But I have a conviction within me. I'm not judging you, but there's a conviction in me that we need to stop. I'm preaching right there. There's a conviction in me that we need to stop fornicating. We got to stop going to the club, even though I keep doing it. But there's a conviction within me that's telling me to stop. And the Holy Spirit is using me in that moment, even though I'm in sin. He's convicting my heart to use me in that moment for us to repent. He's speaking to me, but I'm rejecting his voice. I'm rejecting his voice. I'm rejecting his voice. 
Now, I don't, I don't ever want to be the one that stands before God and talks about a, a person's marriage. I'm not that type of person. I see a lot of people talk about people's marriages. That talk about people being married twice or whatever. At the end of the day, I don't put myself there. We know what the word of God says. But at some point, you got to let people's marriages go. And you have to work out your own salvation in fear and troubling. Because if you're still bombarding someone's marriage, you're dealing with unforgiveness. You're dealing with unforgiveness. Regardless if you think something is biblically incorrect, you got to now forgive someone of their trespasses that goes against the word of God and move on. If you want to continue to talk about someone's marriage, that they're in adultery, and that what about your sin? You got to move on and let God be the judge of their life. Forgive them and move on. But if you're still upset because they're still married, there's unforgiveness there. If you think they're trespassing against the word of God for being married and you're holding that trespass and you're not forgiving them and you're continually bashing them, God will hold things against you. There's certain things that you must leave in the hands of God. This is why when people talk to me about other people's marriages, I said, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Call them to get a divorce? I leave that in the hands of God. I don't focus on that stuff. We know what the word says. But at the end of the day, we know that God is long-suffering. He is gracious and he is merciful. And his grace and mercy abounds greater than what we can understand or what we conceive. In the Old Testament, the woman was sanctioned by law to be stoned to death for adultery. But Jesus came and brought a peculiar and a unique grace and mercy. A peculiar and unique grace and mercy. And the Lord said, he who is without sin cast the first stone. And even though it was according to the law that this woman had to die. Jesus said, I'm going to show grace and mercy because I'm God and I'm above the law. I am the law. I am the Sabbath. I am Lord over the Sabbath. So there will be some people that you would think they're condemned to hell because of what they're going through. But the Lord will show a grace, a mercy, a compassion that overrides your understanding of the law in the scriptures. It doesn't mean that Adultery is good and remarriages are good. It doesn't mean that. But it means that grace and mercy and compassion is still applicable. And the grace and mercy of God exceeds our understanding. And people will get mad. The grace and mercy is so powerful. It is so mind-boggling that the Lord gave Jonah the word of the Lord to go to Nineveh to judge them for judgment. And the Lord said to, uh, to, to, to Jonah, in the next 40 days... Nineveh will be destroyed in the next 40 days. And Jonah thought that destruction will be upon Nineveh. But what began to happen is the people in Nineveh began to repent. And when they repent, the Lord said, okay, I will no longer judge these people and proclaim the destruction over them. And Jonah was upset. Jonah was like, you brought me all this way. I went into a fish's belly. You brought me all this way just for you to, to not do what you said. Jonah was upset that God didn't kill those people. But Jonah did not understand the grace and the mercy of God. The issue with Jonah was his heart. Jonah's heart was wrong. He wanted, he wanted, he wanted uh, uh, the, the, the people to pay. He wanted Nineveh to pay and be condemned by God. Now, some of us, we need to check our heart with T.D. Jakes. Alex, I don't, I, I expose his teaching with homosexuality. Yeah. I expose that he's hanging out with P. Diddy. Yeah. But could T.D. T. D. Jakes be a Nineveh? When we give the word of the Lord to T.D. Jakes. And T.D. Jakes is in his room and he says, mm, I got to repent. And the Lord pulls back his hand and says, T.D. Jakes, you're mine. You're mine. I was going to destroy you in 40 days. But since you repented, I'm done. And Celestial would be upset and say, 
But Lord, you said you're going to kill him. Lord, you have to kill him. Lord, you have to take his life because if you don't do it, my prophecy didn't come to pass. Now I got to delete the video. Celestial, do you not know that I'm long suffering? Celestial, did you not know that I do not take pleasure in the perishing of the wicked? Do you not know that I love the sinner and the righteous? Oh, repando repeketele The Lord is the lion and the lamb. He is an all consuming fire and he is also living water. If you're going to talk about the fear of the Lord, you also got to talk about the love of God. You cannot separate the fear of the Lord and the love of God. They're inseparable. The love of God is connected to the fear of God. God wants us to fear him so we could obtain salvation. He wants to fear him so we could inherit the kingdom of God. The fear of the Lord is connected to the love of God. But if we promote the fear of God we are uh, without the love of God, we are promoting a different gospel. Because the Lord does not want us to be scared of him. But the Lord wants us to respect him. That word fear means reverence. It means a deep respect. But it does not mean being scared of God and running to your room. And not talking to him. Because he's so dangerous. And he's just such a bad person. So we have to run away like he's the boogeyman. No, the Bible says, come unto me. All who are weary, you know, I will give you rest. The Lord wants us to come to him. But he wants us to respect him. Jesus said, if you love me, obey my commands. So there was a fear of the Lord with that. The Lord said, if you love me, obey my commands. Now my question to you is, do you love Jesus? When Jesus says, love thy neighbor as you love thyself. Now that neighbor could be an unbeliever. That neighbor could be a murderer. That neighbor could be a preacher that fell in adultery. That neighbor could be a preacher that raped someone. But do you love Jesus enough to treat that person as you want to be treated? Do, do, do you love Jesus so much that you will forgive someone of their trespasses? Do you, forg do you love Jesus so much that you would Excuse people of their sins when they repent, just like Jesus would. Do you love Jesus so much that you would turn the other cheek? Do you understand me? Because I know I expose a lot. I know I do all these things, but the Lord wanted me to spew out the truth. Because yes, the Lord is calling for a holy people. The Lord is calling for a righteous people. The Lord is calling for a bride without crinkle, without spot. Yes, the Lord is calling these people. The Lord is calling people into repentance. But God is also calling people into love. God is calling people into grace. God is calling people into mercy. In Islam, they kill people when they dishonor. In Islam, they have honor killing. When you're in games and you do stuff wrong, they cut your fingers off and they chop your neck off. But with the Lord, he's long-suffering. The Lord is long-suffering. And I want us to also be long-suffering. I want us all to be long-suffering. I want us to be long-suffering. Where we pray for people, where we expose the false teaching and still pray for people, where we expose the warlock and still pray that they repent, where we expose people, but we still wish for them to turn to Christ. Because at the end of the day, if any of you rejoice in someone going to hell, you have a heart issue. Because down there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth for eternity. There will be no light of day, no water. The rich man was in hell and he was burning and it was just so hot and he needed water. He was thirsty and he asked Lazarus for just a drip of water. That's not a place where we want 
any human to go. Because the Bible says it was created for Satan and his angels. It was created for Satan and his angels. It is an error for any human to go to hell. This is why Jesus had to die on the cross to cancel that error. Jesus had to die on the cross to cancel that error so he could save souls. Do you understand me? And I'm going to continue to preach the word and expose false teaching. I'm going to continue to preach the word and expose false prophets. But I will focus on their teaching. I will focus on their witchcraft. I will not focus on their marriage, their children, what they did 10 years ago in sin. But we will focus on the doctrines of demons. Why? Why do we focus on the doctrines of demons? Because those doctrines of demons are influencing people. Regardless of someone living in sin, we don't just put the sin under the rug, but we have to surface the false teaching so people can be delivered from it. You do not just put aside someone's false teaching and not highlight it because it has affected millions of people. It has affected millions of people. So this is why we highlight it. Because it's not necessarily the preacher, it's the seducing spirit. It's not necessarily the preacher, it's the seducing spirit. It's not necessarily Lovi or Daniel Adams or Passion Java. It is the seducing spirit behind it. It is the agenda of Satan behind it. It is biblical prophecy. It is what the Lord talks about that will happen. That people will take heed to seducing spirits. So when you see me call out certain people, it is seducing spirit. I can't call out everyone. Because it, it, there's too many seducing spirits. And there are also many mighty men and women of God. But we have to come to realize that there is a spirit at work in the church that there is a spirit at work in the body of Christ there is a spirit at work there are seducing spirits there is a Jezebel spirit that is wanting rampant in the church and creating cults and there's also an Ahab spirit where people remain captivated and they are the voiceless and they feel like they don't have the power or the capacity to speak out against Jezebel because of touch not my anointed Elijah ran to the cave because of Jezebel Ahab submitted his authority as a husband to Jezebel because Jezebel's fierce and outspoken. Jezebel would sign uh, documents in Ahab's name. There was a spirit of Ahab working in the church to suppress the oppressed, to suppress the voiceless, so they don't speak out against their cult leader, so they don't speak out against their false prophet, because they see the power and accuracy of Jezebel. The Bible said that Jezebel, that woman who calls herself a prophetess, they don't want to speak about Jezebel's sexual immorality. They don't want to speak about Jezebel's food being sacrificed to demons. They don't want to speak about these things because Jezebel's a prophetess. Because Jezebel has an army. Because Jezebel is a queen. Because Jezebel is powerful. Because Jezebel got a kingdom. Because Jezebel got people who will attack you if you say anything. And that's why Elijah ran. That's why Elijah ran. There's some of you that are dealing with the Ahab spirit. And God's going to deliver you today in the name of Jesus. And there's some of you that are dealing with a narcissistic, Jezebelic spirit. And the Lord's going to deliver you from that as well. And some of you have been victim of a seducing spirit that has seduced you like Delilah has seduced Samson. The Bible says that the soldiers came unto Delilah and said, Delilah, seduce him, entice him, so he may tell us the secrets to his power so we can subdue him. So there is a seducing spirit. That's trying to make you open up your doors and your minds to receive doctrines of demons. To receive false impartations. To receive another gospel so your soul remains trapped and bondage. So your destiny is hindered and swapped. We must know the word of God for ourselves. Because in these end times, it is not the only persecution of man by the flesh. But there is a persecution of the soul. It is not the persecution just by flesh, but it is the persecution of the soul. 
where the soul is receiving demons, where you're receiving the spirit of poverty, the spirit of anti-progression, where you're, this, you're, you're receiving a spirit of schizophrenia, where you're receiving a spirit of delay, witchcraft, infirmity. There is a persecution that is not only physical, but it's spiritual. And if you do not open your eyes or ask the Lord to give you wisdom and understanding, you will run to people that you think that are infallible. And you will take heed to the seducing spirits and the doctrines of demons. And you may not feel anything physically, but spiritually, your soul is in bondage. This is why the Bible says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. But against rulers, against principalities, against cosmic powers, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. This is why with false prophets, you will never see me try to fight them. This is why with false prophets, you will never see me cuss them out. This is why with false prophets, you will never see me try to go to their house and insult them and threaten them. But with false prophets, what I do, I come with the word and say, it is written. With Satan, we say, it is written. With demons, we say it is written. We do not fight with flesh and blood. We do not do these things. But we use the word of God as our foundation. And the word speaks for us. And if people get upset with exposure, tell them to read Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 2 verse 1 through 2. There was a church in Ephesus the Bible talks about. That they begin to test certain apostles and found them to be false. I know your hard work and your perseverance. And you cannot tolerate wicked people and those that call themselves apostles. And you have tested them to be false. If you do not like what, if people don't like what you do, say it is written. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 11. Take no part in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. Let the word be your token of truth. Let your word, let the word be the foundation why you got out of that relationship. Your girlfriend asks you or your boyfriend or your friends ask you, hey, why don't you call me anymore? Why don't you hit, hit me up anymore? It, it, it's not biblical to just ignore me. You can't just cut me out like that. I loved you. I did so many things for you. Let them know the word that the Bible says. That the Bible says this, bad company corrupts good morals. And you hit them up and said, the word says bad company corrupts good morals. And ever since I've been living with you and hanging out with you, I've been going to the club, I've been getting drunk, I've been fornicating, I've been doing all these things. The word is my token of truth. And it says bad company corrupts good morals. So I can't even text you. I can't even call you. I can't even be friends with you because I'm being corrupted. Because I'm being defiled. So I, I don't even want to talk to you. Because when I talk to you, my soul fragments start moving and I start missing you and I start getting I start getting the passions of the lust of the flesh. I can't even text you. I got to block you off everything because your Instagram is corrupting my morals. Because I'm seeing your booty shaking everywhere and you always with your shirt off. It's messing with my morality and my conviction. So I'm going to block you. Let the word of God be your token of truth. Let the word of God be your foundation. Do you understand me? But anyways, nonetheless, I didn't think we were going to go in that direction. But may the same measure of judgment be upon those that judge people. May it be there. When the Lord has delivered you from certain sins, we do not judge people from a place of, hey, you know, you're a horrible person or God's going to kill you. Oh, you're condemned already. There's no hope for you. There's no comfort for you. When you judge someone biblically by their fruit, this is how you do it. You say, you know, what you're doing in sin, according to the word of God, this can lead into hell if you don't repent. You know, I used to struggle with this, right? The Bible says that we know that God does not listen to the prayers of the sinners, but he listens to the godly person that does as well. In John chapter 9, verse, uh, nine, John chapter nine verse 3 through 1. John chapter 9, verse 31. And also says in Matthew chapter 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added unto you. And it also says in 2 Chronicles that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, seek my face, turn from the wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven. So if you really want to, you know, build your relationship with the Lord and get breakthrough and deliverance, and you're trying to get the things that you're praying to God about, you got to repent. 
you know, you got to repent because of the word saying, and I used to struggle with it. That's how you judge fruit. That's how you do it. But you can't do it from a place of condemnation. Even with the unbeliever, you can't condemn unbelievers because they're condemned already. The Bible doesn't even tell us to judge unbelievers. The Bible says the spiritual person judges all things and judgment starts in the house of God. The unbelievers are already judged. But when they come to repentance, there's no condemnation for that, those in Christ Jesus. Okay? So with the, to win the soul with the unbeliever, we don't condemn them. Souls are not won by condemnation. Souls are not won because you're selling someone they're going to hell. Souls will be won through love. Souls will be won through the word of God, through edification. It will be won through cultivation. It will be won through discipleship because you can disciple someone who's still not saved. You're making them a disciple. But the issue that a lot of people don't truly get saved is because they're not discipled. So there's a lot of false conversions happening around the street because people are like, I gave my life to Christ and we walk away and you record it on the internet and then they had the confession, but there's no discipleship and they go down the street again and they, they, they go back to prostitution and masturbation. Invite them to your church. Get, them, get their phone number. Hang out with them. Hit them up. Do something to disciple them. Because salvation is not the confession by faith only. Because if your works contradict your confession, you were never saved. You were never in Christ if your works contradict your confession. The Bible says faith without works is dead. So if your works contradict your faith, it's done. Yes, the Bible says by faith through grace we're saved. Yes, by faith through grace. But it, 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 that doesn't mean that your works contradict your faith. That doesn't mean your works contradict your faith. And I'm not talking about falling in sin and messing up here and there. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about those who habitually live in sin. All right? But anyways, guys, I love you guys in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you and keep you in his mighty name. God bless you in Jesus' name.